So we just talked about something has to pass a vertical line test in order for the inverse to be a function. Here we have a parabola. Currently, this parabola does not pass the horizontal line test. If we did the inverse of the whole thing, the inverse would not be a function. But this question says, could you figure out a way to restrict the domain? In other words, only look at part of the graph, only some of the x values, so that the inverse is a function. And then the inverse would be a perfect square root graph. So if I'm looking at this parabola, what could I do? What part of the parabola could I look at? The vertex is going to be important, right? Because if I take out my highlighter and I only think about this side, and in this question it says determine two ways. So we're going to figure out one way where we look at one side and another way we look at another side. That's right. So if we look at the yellow side, does the yellow side now pass the horizontal line test? Yes. So one way to restrict the domain would be just to look at the x values less than or equal to 1. Yeah, if it, wherever the vertex is, will uh, like I could do that side is my second one. So a second way would be x bigger than one. I included one with the first one, so I decided not to include one with the second one. So this second one is our green one. Our first one is our yellow one. I don't think they would uh, worry about it because both of them still would work. Okay? Technically, it would be fine if you restricted it and said x was bigger than 4. It would work because if you just did this part here bigger than 4, it would still pass the, the horizontal line test. Technically, and some people argue that they shouldn't put this question on the exam anymore because if a student said, I'm only going to take one point, x equals 3. That's it. That's my new domain, one point. Does one point pass the horizontal line test? Yes. So you're good. But, and they couldn't mark you wrong because you're fine. x equals 7. On an exam, not like on tests, they for sure. Yeah, so. So here there are many different answers, but what they're looking for is this idea that I look at half of the parabola and the other half of the parabola, especially because they want you to write the equation of the inverse each time. So it might be a little bit more difficult if you don't choose just half of the parabola to write that equation. But if we look at this part where x is less than 1, okay, first of all, when we do our parabola and we do the inverse equation and we switch x and y, we would have x equals y minus 1 all squared plus 3. So solving for this, we'd subtract 3 on both sides. This is the algebraic way to find an inverse. And when we square root both sides, we get plus or minus. Adding 1 to both sides, which means one equation, and I'm going to write it with the square root first, and the plus 1 at the end. and the other one would have the minus. So you have to figure out 
which equation goes with which? When we switch the x and the y, which equation goes with which graph? Oh, it should be plus. Thank you. There we go. This should still be plus because it's plus over here. Okay. Well, if we go to our graph and we just start by switching x and y, what's going to happen to the point 1, 3? 3, 1. 3, 1. Let's take another point. Here we've got 2, 4. 4, 2. 4, 2. And here we have 0, 4, 4, 0. Okay. Just to help us visualize, I'm going to circle this point right here. What point was that? That was 4, 2, I mean 2, 4. And that one goes with this one right there. Does that make sense? So, after reflecting over this diagonal line, notice there's no intersection between those two graphs because they never cross that diagonal line. But after reflecting it over, we notice that the green graph is the upper portion. The yellow graph would be the lower portion. So I'm going to add those highlighter colors on here as well. Yellow graph is the lower portion. The green graph is the upper portion. Which of these two equations is the upper portion? The positive square root one or the negative square root one? The positive square root one. So the green one, its equation, is it x minus 3 plus 1? And the yellow one's equation, So now we've written the equation of the inverse each time. We've color coded our graph. I'm going to just get rid of that color there. We've color coded our graph to show that. We've restricted the domain in two ways and come up with an equation for both of them. We have this parabola only when x is bigger than or e less than or equal to 1 as our original domain. And we have that one. Questions for this one? Ten and twelve. 